Here is a mini lecture about the sum of the coloring equations. Uh, this is based on section 2.2, .2, pages 15 to 17. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to explain a theorem that says that the sum of the coloring equations is zero. So let's see what that means in an example. Here is our example. For the given link, it's down here on the bottom left, for the given link, if we write all the coloring equations in the form x plus y minus 2z congruent to 0 mod n, in other words, uh, if we gather all the terms in every coloring equation on the left-hand side, um, then the sum with signs of the equations is 0. Um, this is a slightly strange phrase, so let me explain what this means. So first of all, here's our link. And then next, here are the coloring equations. Uh, I worked them all out in advance. So I've labeled all the arcs in the diagram with a blue letter, A, B, C, and so on. And I've uh, labeled all the crossings with a color. And then for each crossing, I've written out the coloring equations down here. So let's check one of them. Let's check the orange coloring equation. We have A is one understrand, F is another, and then C. C. C is the overstrand, so that we should have a plus f minus 2c is congruent to 0. Is that what I wrote? Yes. Excellent. That was just there. That's the one we checked. Then the next step is that the sum with signs of the coloring equations is 0. In fact, this sum with signs of the coloring equations is 0. It's here. Let's see if this is going to turn into a rectangle for me. Brilliant. Um, so let's check that if I sum the coloring equations with these signs, in other words, if I take the green one plus the gray one minus the blue one minus the light green one and so on, then I get zero. Well, let's look how many A's there are in our coloring equations. Here's one. Here are some more. Oh, apparently my circle wasn't good enough. Let's try again. There we go. And here is one more. Is that it? Yeah, those are all the A's. And so the first A lives in the green equation, so it comes with sign plus one. The second occurrence is minus two A with sign plus one again. And the third equation is plus A again with sign plus one. So we get A minus two A plus a. That's the contribution from the a's in the sum of the coloring equations. And indeed, uh, it does sum to 0. So that when we sum all the equations according to these signs, there won't be any a's left. Let's choose a different letter. Let's choose f. Um, well, I think I can only see two f's. Oh, let's choose a different color for that. Uh, pink. Here's one f. Here's another. There are no more f's, and uh, if we check carefully, then we see that the orange and yellow equations have the opposite sign. So that when I sum them together, I'm going to get plus f from the orange equation minus f from the yellow equation, so that the f's will occur with uh, the the f's in the sum of these equations will be zero. Okay, what does this mean? What is the point of this result? Um, let me write that as 4. It means that we can forget one of the coloring equations. In other words, if we want to check whether we've made a coloring, then we only need to check the first uh, all but one equations, then the last one would hold automatically because it's the sum of the uh, previous ones. So this is an important point for us. Now, it's a general theorem. Here we are. Theorem. The coloring equations for a link diagram sum to zero. So long as the signs have been chosen well. And 
what the theorem does is it works out the correct way to choose all the signs so that you do get a sum of zero. So here's how to choose the correct signs. Um, now this isn't a proof of the theorem, however this recipe and my explanation that I'm going to give you um, I think give you the idea of the proof. If you want to see the full proof of course go to the notes and see what they say. So step one that we have to perform is that we have to chessboard our diagram. What does that mean? That means I'm going to shade, uh, I'm going to, for every region of the diagram, for example here's a region in between these arcs, here's another region down here, and also the outside is a region. For each region I have to choose either to colour it in or not. Um, and I have to do that in such a way that if two regions are on either side of some arc, then only one of them is shaded in and the other is unshaded. Uh, and the way we chessboard a diagram is really simple. We just start. So pick one to shade in. There we go. There's a shaded region. Well, the next one, that's here, that's not going to be shaded in. So the next one, I just leap over and I just leap over an arc. This one must be shaded in because it's over an arc from one that wasn't. There we go. And then if I leap over this arc, I find a new region that has to be shaded in. Whoops, let's get rid of that. And if I leap over this arc, then I get another region again has to be shaded in because it's over an arc from an unshaded region. I keep going. Now if I start here and leap over this arc, I have to be unshaded. So that if I leap again into this region, I must be shaded once more. And again, this one must be unshaded because it's over an arc from shaded regions. So I don't normally put anything in the unshaded regions, but I leave it like that. So there's a chessboarding. So that was step one. Here's step two. I'm going to write my colouring equations according to the following rule. Well, each crossing now, there's going to be chessboarding there. And what I do is, um, if, I, if I see an arc, or an end of an arc, that's clockwise from a shaded region, I give it sign plus. And if it's anti-clockwise from a shaded region, I give it sign minus. So in the left-hand case, I get these signs. And in the right-hand case, I get these signs. So this is, a norm this is a version of the coloring equations, right? It says that twice the overstrand, A plus A, minus the understrands, minus B minus C, is zero. And similarly on this side. And you can check. Uh, you should pause it and check that I've written the, uh, the labels that are clockwise from shaded regions with pluses and the ones that are anti-clockwise with minuses. And so now what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to write out the colouring equations in this case and check that they do sum to zero. And I am going to try to be clever and copy my chessboarding. Wish me luck everybody. Is that acceptable? Let's say that's acceptable and continue. Um, okay. So what about the green crossing? That's here. Well, uh, this under label here, it's anti-clockwise from a gray region. So we have minus A. Uh, this D here, that's clockwise from a gray region. So we get plus D. Uh, this, the next label is this one, it's G. It's anti-clockwise from a grey region, so it's minus G. And the next one, this is D again, it's clockwise from a grey region, so it's plus D. Uh, then the grey crossing, we're going to have um, A is clockwise there. So it's A minus B plus A minus D. Convert to zero for blue. B is clockwise from a grey region, so it's going to be B minus C plus G minus C again. Can't go to zero. 
uh, for light green, that's here, uh, E is clockwise from a grey region. So we're going to have E minus D plus C minus D convert to zero. Um, for the pink, uh, it's G, which is clockwise. So we're going to have G minus C plus G. Where are we? Pink. G minus C plus G minus E. I'm going to zero. For orange, we're going to have, uh, let's see, C is clockwise from the gray region. So we've got C minus A plus C minus F to zero and finally yellow uh, we see that D is clockwise from a gray region so D minus G plus F minus G congruent to zero okay I hope I got that right let's check that the sum of the equations is indeed zero well let's look for the A's we've got minus one plus one that gives us zero A's, that gives us plus one A's, and here's the last one, minus one A. So the A's are fine. Let's pick a different letter, minus G. Whoops, my circle wasn't good enough. Minus G, plus G, plus G, minus G, plus another G, minus another G. So we've got minus two, zero, zero. Now, here's the last step. Why is this working? Um, well, let's get rid of all my little circles. And let's look at a short arc of the diagram. What's a short arc? It's, um, it's the bit of an arc from an overcrossing to an undercrossing like this right here there's a short arc now what's the label on this short arc well it's d there's d around there and where does this short arc get involved well it gets involved at the green crossing and in fact there's our d and it gets involved at the gray crossing and in fact there's our d again that was rubbish. Let's get rid of that. Let's just put a dot underneath the D's. There we go. Um, and you see these D's occur with different signs, right? So they cancel each other out. And why do they occur with different signs? Well, here at the green crossing, you see that the blue short arc is clockwise from the sh shaded region, so it occurs with sign plus one. There it is. Whereas at the other end, at the gray crossing, it's anti-clockwise from the gray region, so it occurs with sine minus one. So the contribution to all the equations from this short arc is a plus d in one equation and a minus d in the other, and they cancel out. And that, if you go through all the short arcs, tells you all the cancellations in the sum of the coloring equations. So that's the end of the mini lecture.